Hello Grade 10s, welcome to the third lesson in the series representing chemical change. In this lesson we will look at the reactions of metal oxides with water. Since balancing chemical equations is such a fundamentally important skill for quantitative studies in chemistry, this lesson continues to look at how to balance chemical equations. In our previous lesson, we reacted alkali metals in pure oxygen. Let's cross over to Diasha to recap what we observed. What we observed was that the metals burned with distinctive coloured flames and that a white metal oxide formed as a product. But that is not the only observation we made. We also did experiments with alkali earth metals where we burned magnesium and calcium in oxygen. Diasha will recap these observations. We observed that both these substances burned with a distinctive colour flame. We also saw a white alkaline earth metal oxide forming with each of the reactions. We also practiced a very important skill we have been developing. The skill of writing balanced chemical equations will be useful to you throughout all your studies of chemistry. Let's recap the steps to writing a balanced reaction equation. Step 1. Write a word equation for the reaction. Reactants are placed on the left, products on the right, and in the middle, the arrow. Step 2. Change the word equation into a chemical equation. This is where your knowledge of elemental symbols and of writing formulae will be most useful. Step 3. Check that the number of atoms of each element on the left of the arrow is equal to the number of atoms of each element on the right of the arrow. Step 4. Balance the equation by writing numbers in front of the formula. We will be writing balanced equations throughout the series. In today's lesson, we will identify the products formed when alkali and alkali earth metals dissolve in water and write balanced chemical equations for these reactions. Do you remember that when we reacted the alkali metals and oxygen, we saved the metal oxides formed for further testing. Let's use these white substances to determine what the chemical properties of these metal oxides are. To do this, we will test their solubility. In other words, we will check whether they dissolve completely in water or not. We will also test the solution to determine whether it is acidic or basic. Before we start our experiments, I would like to remind you what the terms acid and base mean. An acid is a substance that has a pH value less than 7, while a base is a substance that, on dissolving in water, has a pH value greater than 7. So, what we need to do is add water to the metal oxides that we've saved from our previous experiments and give the gas jars a good shake. We will then use red litmus paper as an indicator to determine whether the product that forms is an acid or a base. Red litmus paper will turn blue if the solution is a base and remain red if it is an acid. First we add water to the jar containing the lithium oxide and shake it. The lithium oxide is soluble in water. The red litmus paper turns blue. This means that the solution is basic. When we repeat the experiment with the sodium oxide and the potassium oxide, we find that the results are the same. Both sodium and potassium oxide dissolve completely in water, and in both instances, the red litmus paper turns blue, indicating that both the solutions are basic. But what happens to a chemical when it dissolves in water to form a basic solution? The answer is actually quite simple. A chemical reaction takes place. The alkali metals react with water to form the product metal hydroxide. Let's have a look at the word equations for the reactions that we have observed. Lithium oxide plus water react to form lithium hydroxide. Sodium oxide plus water react to form sodium hydroxide. Potassium oxide plus water react to form potassium hydroxide. We will now translate these word equations into chemical equations. We will represent the substances at a sub-microscopic level with the use of coloured circles. For this lesson, we will assign the atoms colours. These colours we will assign to the atoms are based on the CPK assignment of colours. CPK colour assignments are used in ball and stick models of substances. 
In these models, the chemical element of an atom is represented by the color of the ball. The CPK stands for the names of the chemists who first used such models to represent molecules to show their shape. They are Robert Corey, Linus Pauling, pictured here, and Walter Coulton. In these models, red balls represent oxygen atoms, white balls represent hydrogen atoms, and violet balls represent the alkali metals. So, let's look at the reaction of lithium oxide with water. The word equation is lithium oxide reacts with water to form lithium hydroxide. The next step is to translate the word equation into a chemical equation. So, Li2O plus H2O forms LiOH. We also need to include the phases of the substances. So lithium oxide is a solid and water is a liquid. So Li2O brackets S reacts with H2O brackets L to form LiOH brackets AQ. The AQ means that the substance is dissolved in water. It is in solution. Now let's use our PCK colored balls to represent the atoms in these compounds. But first, let's draw a line through the arrow to separate the reactants from the product. The lithium oxide consists of two lithium atoms and one oxygen atom. So, we will use two violet balls and one red ball to represent lithium oxide. A water molecule consists of one oxygen atom and two hydrogen atoms, so we will use one red ball and two white balls. Now, let's rearrange the atoms of the reactants to form the product. One hydrogen atom moves from the water molecule and one lithium atom moves from the lithium oxide to form two units of lithium hydroxide. Using the models of the substances, we can check to see if the equation is balanced. As you can see, the equation is not balanced. Two units of lithium hydroxide have formed. In order to balance the equation, we need to write a 2 in front of the lithium hydroxide because two particles of lithium hydroxide formed in this chemical reaction. Diasha will show you another method to write a balanced chemical equation for the reaction between magnesium oxide and water. So far we have focused on the reactions of the alkali metals and the oxides of the alkali metals. But did you know that there are many useful household substances containing these elements? Here is one example of a household product that contains sodium hydroxide, drain cleaner. Sodium hydroxide is very dangerous, so drain cleaner fluid should never be swallowed or splashed into your eyes. Now, let's look at the reactions of the alkali earth metal oxides with water. Let's cross over to Diasha to do the experiments. When water is added to magnesium oxide, we see that the water turns a milky white. What does this mean? Well, it means that only some of the solid dissolved in the water. We say that this substance, magnesium oxide, is partially soluble. Let's clearly define this new term, partial solubility. Partial solubility, when a substance dissolves incompletely in water. We know that magnesium oxide is partially soluble because we can see the little bits of undissolved oxide floating in the water. But has any of the magnesium oxide dissolved? Well. We can test to see if the water has changed pH using red litmus paper. When a piece of red litmus paper is dipped into this solution, it turns blue in color. What does this mean? It shows that the solution is basic. This also shows that some of the magnesium oxide has reacted with the water to form a new substance. Can you work out what this new substance could be? Let's try a practical modeling approach to make this clear. I have cut out cardboard circles to represent the atoms of each element. In this model, we are using the PCK color assignment again. The dark green circle represents magnesium, the red circles represent oxygen, and the white circle represents hydrogen. Here is the magnesium oxide. The green circle represents magnesium, and the red circle represents oxygen. This represents a water molecule. 
it has one oxygen atom and two hydrogen atoms. Now, in the reaction, we observe that the oxygen ion breaks away from the magnesium ion and a hydrogen ion from the water breaks away from the water molecule and bonds with the oxygen ion. We now have two hydroxide ions. Hydroxide ions consist of one red oxygen atom and one white hydrogen atom. Two hydroxide ions join with the magnesium atom to form one new compound. The product must have two oxygen atoms, one magnesium atom and two hydrogen atoms. This product is called magnesium hydroxide. The formula is written as Mg open brackets OH close brackets subscript 2. Diasha will now help us to write a balanced chemical equation for the reaction of magnesium oxide with water. Right, now we are ready to write the chemical equation for this reaction. The word equation for magnesium oxide in water reads magnesium oxide and water reacts to form magnesium hydroxide. Remember, the next step is to convert the word equation into a chemical equation and to make sure you write down the correct formula for each substance. Magnesium oxide is MgO, water is H2O. Magnesium hydroxide has a formula of Mg bracket OH close bracket 2. So here we have the chemical equation for this reaction. MgO plus H2O react to form Mg open bracket OH close bracket 2. Let's check whether this equation is balanced. You may want to draw up a simple table like this one. Elements on left, one atom magnesium, two atoms oxygen, two atoms hydrogen. And elements on right, one atom magnesium, two atoms oxygen, two atoms hydrogen. As you can see, the number of atoms of each element is the same for the reactants and for the products. This means that our equation is balanced. Now, get ready to observe what happens as we repeat the experiment using calcium oxide. As the water is added to the calcium oxide, we see that once again the solution that forms is milky white in color. We can conclude that calcium oxide is also partially soluble in water. Some solid particles remain undissolved in the water. When red litmus is dipped into the solution, it turns blue. Once again, this indicates that the solution is basic. This shows that some of calcium oxide did react and must have formed calcium hydroxide. Now, we must write the chemical equation for the reaction of calcium oxide and water. Here is the word equation. Calcium oxide plus water reacts to form calcium hydroxide. The chemical equation is CaO plus H2O reacts to form Ca open brackets OH close brackets 2. The last step of course is to check that the equation is balanced. Look at this table to see if the number of atoms of each element present before the reaction is the same as after the reaction. We conclude that the equation is balanced as the atoms of all the elements on the left add up to the elements on the right. Can you see the pattern in the chemical equations we have written so far? Let's take a look at those equations again. MgO plus H2O react to form Mg open bracket OH close bracket 2. CaO plus H2O react to form Ca open bracket OH close bracket 2. I'm sure you're beginning to see that elements from the same group react in the same way. You now know that metal hydroxides form when metal oxides from group 1 and group 2 metals react with water. These chemical changes have been represented in balanced chemical equations. Don't forget to go to the task video on representing chemical change and visit the Mindset website www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn.
Join us next time when we look at the reactions of metals with water and acids. Until then, goodbye.